ancient history of the games, rugby. People with no pads is running into each other. Through the course of time, safety became a huge thing. The forward pass came in. Teddy Roosevelt basically saved the game. The innovations continue to come, and they need to for the future of the game. The MVP, mobile virtual player, was out of necessity. I opted six years ago to stop tackling in practice, primarily to save my players. The frustration was I didn't have anything I could tackle that moved. And uh, with uh, John Curry, a classmate of mine here at Dartmouth, uh, he's in the Thayer School of Engineering, uh, I said, look, can you make one of these things move? We introduced that mobile pop-up blocking dummy as a capstone design project option. And for the uh, engineering students at the uh, senior level, picked it up and uh, ran with it developing prototypes and really putting some interesting technology out on the field that caught people's eye. We kind of started development basically by blending a souped-up RC car with a standard tackling dummy. It runs around a 5 second 40, top, top speed is a little under 20 miles an hour. It's 180 pounds, so it gives a realistic resistance when you tackle it, and it's totally self-riding, so as soon as you hit it, it'll pop back up and continue on its merry way. What it does is it essentially replicates a moving target without engaging another human. So, you know, by design, half 50% uh, drop in injury rate because two guys run into each other. But what I didn't anticipate was how specific you can become identifying tackling form. You have to chase it. It can respond, it can react. There's no clues. The arms don't uh, patter down, the feet don't chop down. It takes a right, takes a left, it stops or accelerates. And it makes a guy really rely on his fundamentals and his technique. And we become very, very proficient tacklers, far better tacklers now than what we used to do the old way. We're on the field with half the NFL, with over 30 uh, D1 schools and, and over 50 high schools. Yeah, run right at it. And break. There you go. There you go. That's pretty good. There it is, Jeff. Show that robot who's boss. Uh, you need to put it like right here in the beginning so people can walk it out. They don't know it moves. Exactly. And then they start walking towards it. <laughs> it's become part of the team. It doesn't talk back. It does what it's asked to do, and uh, it does it repeatedly. You know, they're still, they're still progressing when it comes to both passing and kicking. The lack of arms hurts the passing component. And the lack of feet also hurts the kicking component. In order to make it uh, work more effectively and like a real football player, we started to make it smarter and smarter. And, and before you know it, the more that you treat it like a human, the more it starts acting like one. The MVP, it's in a highly intellectual environment here at Dartmouth, and it's interacting with a lot of very, very smart kids. So we're trying to catch it up to speed, coach it off the field. A little bit of literature, a little bit of history uh, doesn't hurt anyone. What symbol does Fitzgerald use for Gatsby's unrequited love of Daisy? It can be hurtful as someone on the team, you know, who's been recruited, who's, who's put in all these hours and um, put time into practice and film, and then you get this artificial intelligence that comes in. Coach is talking to them. He's got his arm around them at practice. It's okay, but man, you get better. Gotta see it all. He's walking off the field with them when you know that's usually your time to get a quick word in with coach. But you know, it's life. This is so much fun. I think there's going to be some jealousy that transforms into fear and trepidation on the part of the players. I think they're going to have to up their game or move to another institution. There's still a bit of a clash between the MVPs and the guys. No one wants to see their job taken away. You know, no one wants to see uh, you know, an MVP out there on third and 10 instead of one of our guys. Some guys might be a little scared. You know, what's the next model gonna look like? Whoa. The worry with that is that they really become their own people. You know, there's not much that separates one of these new age robots from a human, aside from the fact that we have conscious and, and we can think on our own. So you get these robots 
really thinking and, and learning and, and able to make decisions on their own, you know, who knows what's gonna happen. Alan Turing said, it seems probable that once the machine thinking method had started, it would not take long to outstrip our feeble powers. At some stage, therefore, we should have to expect the machines to take control. At the end of the day, we can plug them into a terminal. We can, uh, we can look at their brain, which is actually this, and, and go through their thoughts, see what they've been thinking, and, and the thoughts are starting to get a little more dangerous, a little bit more advanced. So here, he's dodging a tackle. What does this mean? Execute order 66? I guess the risk with one of those is they go rogue. You know, we kind of got to be careful and, you know, make sure we're on top of them and in control. I think we need to pull the plug on them before they pull the plug on us. Where will things be down the road? I think we're going to outpace the capability of the players pretty soon, so they better watch out. As we developed MVP, we can make them as fast as the players. We're trying to match the players in agility and acceleration and certainly elusiveness. And I think if you're going up against certain teams that really having 11 dummies is very appropriate. Harvard, for example, you might as well fight fire with fire. Could I see a day when players are replaced entirely? Absolutely. I think we're just a few steps away 